So here's my Plex server, comprised of five hard drives connected to an ITX motherboard, powered by an i5-10400 in the original Jonesbow N-Series case, which is the N1 and running Windows 11. Now to remote into my server, I use Google Remote Desktop, which is great, but not perfect. Could what GLINet just sent me be exactly what I need to perfect my setup? Well, let's see. YouTube, welcome to Geek Shh. So when GLINet reached out to me about reviewing their Comet PoE Remote KVM, I got excited because I knew this may very well be the missing piece to my perfect Plex setup. Now what separates this from what I'm currently using is that Google Remote Desktop doesn't start until I'm on the welcome screen of Windows 11. But this remote KVM starts even before the computer does, which allows me to remote into not only the desktop, but the BIOS as well. Also, when you add a power control board, which is also made by GLINet, you can power your computer on, off, as well as restart it, essentially giving you the ability to have your PC in a whole nother city, state, or even country, while still being able to fully control it. Now, even though I'm installing this on a Windows computer, make no mistake about it, this can be installed on Linux and Mac OS just as well. So in the box, we have a manual, the Comet KVM, and then a box of accessories, which consist of a HDMI cable, a ethernet cable, and a USB-C cable as well. So the Comet comes in at about four inches wide, a little under three inches in height, and a little under one inch in width while weighing in at about 133 grams. So in terms of functionality, you have a PoE port, which stands for power over ethernet. So if you have a PoE switch, you can use an ethernet cable to power this device instead of having to use a USB-C cable with a power brick. Then we have a USB-C port, which gives you keyboard and mouse functionality. Then we have the HDMI port. Then we have a reset button. And finally, we have a USB 2.0 port, which we will use to connect to our power control board. Also, since I don't have a PoE switch, I gotta use the USB-C cable plugged into the port on the side with a power brick that I just had laying around to power the device up. Now, for the sake of the mechanical hard drives that I have in my Plex server, we're gonna first test things out in a spare PC that I have lying around instead. So let's go ahead and plug everything up and then head over to another computer on the same network. Now, unfortunately, GLINet doesn't have a site that scans your network for their device. So you have to log in to your router to retrieve the Comet's IP address. So let's go ahead and type that in. All right, so we're here on the site. So now let's go ahead and press advance. Then, all right, now we got to type in a password. Let's just create something. We'll change it later. All right, go ahead and hit apply. All right, so. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is go down here and actually change it. This should be white. So you wanna go here and change it to dark mode if that's what you're into. That's one of the first things I do is change it to dark mode. All right, so now what we're gonna do is uh, up here, this is how you log out up here. This is how do you reboot. If the KVM ever gets stuck, you could just reboot it that way. This is for security. Go ahead and set up two-factor authentication. So, you know, make it a more secure way to log into your device. Also, if you need to update your firmware, make sure you do that as well. Go ahead and update it to the latest, whatever that is. All right, then right here, you got full screen. Then right here, you can toggle the toolbar to take it away and bring it back. Now, what we're gonna do is over here, make sure when it comes to EDID, Make sure you change it. Sometimes they'll put it to a different one by default. All you really need is 1920 by 1080p. So if that's what you're interested in, go ahead and do that. That's one of the first things I do as well. As far as quality, you don't need nothing amazing. You know, medium is good enough to tell you honest truth. Now let's go ahead and get things started up. So we're gonna go up here to accessories. And as you can see, I got the ATX power. I'm just gonna go ahead and press short press. And that should start up my computer as you can see on the screen. So it already went ahead and started up the computer. Now, this is the beautiful thing about this. Like I told y'all before, we can go into the BIOS if we really want to. That's the beautiful thing. We're gonna do that at the end. But for now, let's go ahead and go into Windows. So let's go ahead and get things started. As you can see right here, then just type in whatever password you got. 
set up and boom you're on your you're on your machine <laughs> this is utterly amazing now it's a lot of things that you could do here uh let's see you got virtual media where you need to add something to it um i'm going to do something there you got tail scale this is a great way where you can log into your kvm through tail scale you can add this to your tail net and then you could log in that way that's a beautiful way to do it um, you also have the option of setting up a cloud service. I personally didn't do this, but you can set it up where you can log into their website, GLINet website to log into then remote into your computer. Personally, I didn't do this. I prefer to leave everything local on my machine, but that is an option for you as well. Then I think we went over this update firmware. Uh, you could put it full screen if you want to, then press escape if you want to get out of that uh expand to bar let me see oh okay all right and uh you know collapse toolbar you got help right here you got the app center like i told you tail scale virtual media if you want to add like a file so you can update your machine you can do it through here it comes with like 32 gigs you could just go ahead and update you know whatever file your iso you can add it if you want to go ahead and update the remote machine that's a beautiful way of doing things as well what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and update. I'm going to add my firmware for my BIOS of this. And I'm going to see if we can up, you know, update my firm or our BIOS on here. I'm going to see if we could do that through here. So that's going to be interesting. We're going to do that at the end. Over here is the accessories. Like I said, short press to, you know, start the computer up. You got the long press and you got restart. We could go ahead and try that out again. Over here is something that I really like. It's the clipboard. So if you want to, let's say you want to type something in, you, you know, you can't copy and paste, you know, you can't come up here, copy this and then paste it onto the machine. It don't work like that, but you can come up here, paste that in, and then it will paste it on here. So that's a beautiful way of doing things as well. Then you have some shortcuts. If you want to set up some shortcuts on your machine, that's a beautiful way of doing that. Then you can set up like some wake on land devices, and then you have terminal right here. So over here in settings, like I told you, we already went over there. We did uh, medium and you could change this from web RTC to direct. I will just leave it on web. You could change the orientation if you want. And, you know, like I said, 1920 by 1080p is good enough for me. Then this is good right here as well. Speaker. So you can turn on the speaker on the machine so you can hear everything that is going on on it. So that's a beautiful way of doing things as well. Also, you can communicate through your microphone to the machine as well. That's good. Um, then you have the keyboard. Then you have the virtual keyboard. Virtual keyboard is good uh, sometimes. If on my other computer, when I was trying this out, when I try to go in the BIOS, I couldn't just press delete on my keyboard to go in the BIOS. So I had to actually open this up and then press delete on here to go into my BIOS. So if you run into that situation, this is a great way. Uh, it's good to just use the virtual keyboard. Then you have your mouse settings right here. Show local mouse. If you want to take this away where you don't see your local mouse on top of it, then you could do that as well. Then you could have your mouse jiggle. If you want to keep the computer on, you don't want the computer, you know, the screensaver to go off or to turn on or whatever. You could just use mouse jiggle, change your scroll rate, scroll direction, mouse mode. Mouse mode uh, is a way for you. Let's say you just want to use your mouse inside the, the machine, the remote machine, then you can turn this on. You could do relative and you could just use the mouse in the machine and no longer have, you know, mouse everywhere. Then you could just press escape to go back if anytime you want to use the mouse. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So now you're just using the mouse on here. So if we go to the left, we can't, you know what I mean? We go to the top, we can't. But if you ever want to get out of there, you could just press escape and then you could get back over here. I prefer absolute, but you know, then you have, you know, device device identity, you know, your language, color mode, and then your time zone. Then you could reset your KVM right here. And then if you want to modify your IP address, you could do if you want to set up like a static IP address on a different IP, you could do that from here as well. So this is very good. Let's go ahead and uh, try out on um, restarting the machine. Let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and press restart. Let's see what happens if it restarts it or just some nonsense going on. So it restarted it. All right, let's see if we could go into 
Uh, I'm not fast enough. Ah, I missed the BIOS, but you see it just restarted machine. So if you ever in a situation where your computer freezes up, your remote machine freezes up for whatever reason, you could just go ahead and press restart and you could get right back in there. Um, you have short press and long press. I don't, I think short press is just to start it all, just to uh, power up the machine. I think long press is to power it down. So let's see if we could get into the actual BIOS real quick. Let me go into the BIOS. Let me just press that again. I really, really, really like this, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. This is really dope. So let me go ahead and get ready. See if I can press delete and get into the BIOS. Or is it going to take me to... Ah, oh, I missed it again. Jesus Christ. So that's what I was telling y'all before. Sometimes it's best to bring out the virtual keyboard so you can get into the BIOS that way. So hold on a second. Let's go ahead and do it again. And then I'm going to pull out the virtual keyboard. All right. So we're loaded up. And this is why I didn't want to necessarily do it on my Plex server, because at the end of the day, you don't want to really be doing this to your mechanical hard drives. Now let's go in here. I restarted it. Now we're going to open up the virtual machine and we're going to be able to press delete from here. See, now we got into, <laughs> now we got in there very quickly. So that's why, some, all right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video right there because I don't want this video to be too long, but this is an amazing KVM to pick up. If you need to make your machine remote for whatever reason, no matter which type of computer you have, I think this is amazing. I think the value of it is crazy. Right now it's on sale with the Black Friday sale, but even if you miss the Black Friday sale, I think it, the value of it, even at its regular price of around a hundred bucks is amazing. Anyway, one last thing I want to tell you guys before I get up out of here. If you run into issues, get in the ATX power control board working the right way so you can start up your computer or shut down your computer or restart your computer remotely. I'm going to leave a link in the description of a video that I actually had to watch to troubleshoot it, to get it working properly. Anyway, my name is DeMarco Payne for Geeksh. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And last but not least, may the good news be yours.